You're listening to Podcast PXN, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. Let's do this. What's up, guys, and welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 105. I am Labor Hills for Chance, aka, aka Roro on Twitter, and I am joined by the man who would make Master Chief Collection Game of the Year every year if he could, <laughs> Daniel Prindle. Yes! And last but not least, Alex Chan's arrival for Steph's Heart in Marriage, <laughs> Christian Masters. <laughs> Dude. Funny you say that. It's been a week and a half, and I'm still thinking about Steph. So. Of course you are. Yeah, mm, of, course of course I am. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching us live and participating in the live chat. Just as a reminder, we are live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Just search up Podcast PXN, and you will find us as well on Switch.tv slash Podcast PXN. The topic of the show this week is the Nintendo Direct tomorrow and our predictions for said Direct. But before... We get into the top of the show. We always start off the show with the PXN news of the week. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I saw this news story a little bit earlier this week, and then it was a little updated even more uh, yesterday. And I thought, oh, maybe it's going to get easier for streamers to <laughs> possibly stream music while playing games or drawing or whatever they like to do. But instead, Twitch went the opposite route and maybe the more predictable route and making it even harder for streamers to play their music on their platform. Uh, I'm reading from uh, GameSpot. Switch offers music publishers tools to detect song usage. The new deal will provide music publishers with tools to detect usage of their copywritten music on the platform. Twitch has struck a deal with the National Music Publishers Association after months of animosity between the music industry and Amazon-owned streaming giant. As reported by Variety, the arrangement is not... Uh, a full-on licensing agreement, but instead it looks to be uh, the basis for a partnership between Twitch and music publishers. The announcement states that Twitch has created a new process that participating music rights holders can opt into uh, report certain users of uh, their music to address when creators inadvertently or incidentally use music in their streams. Uh, so a lot of Twitch streamers have dealt with DMCA takedowns uh, in the past with their new... Uh, systems that are in place to detect the music, uh, whether it be your VODs are completely removed or your channel just disappears after <laughs> after you stream. Uh, so a lot of a little bit more wary of what music they're playing. And there are a lot of great options out there, especially a lot of video game OSTs and Bungie themselves have said, you can stream our music, we don't care, go ahead. Uh, so there's definitely those options, but I know a lot of people would like to listen to Ariana Grande, myself, and I'm that person. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about Twitch kind of cracking down on this, uh, the music uh, industry? Well, not cracking down, but kind of helping, <laughs> helping them out. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about this, Christian? What do you, what do you think? I know you stream. Yeah, I mean, it, it's cool. I, I like the idea that uh, there are ways to kind of rectify that issue before, like just like an automatic ban or the video is taken down. I think that's a, a, a great step in, in the right direction. I mean, it's like feels like that's what we'd say about Twitch. Like all, every time we talk about them, it's, it's that it's only a step in the right direction. This feels that way. Um, I know they were in talks for a long time with trying to like, deal with stuff like this. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see how people are going to take this like the the harder way to to stream music. I know there are ways to like go around. Like you just mentioned streaming Ariana Grande. Like supposedly you can stream actual music as long as it's low enough and the game volume is higher. Twitch won't detect it, so there are like a ways around it. But I mean, I would love to see more like partnered stuff or you know other like l licenses that you can like put out by different places where you can actually play the music and and let it be on stream without you know Twitch cracking down on you. But I, I don't, I I just legit don't know. Yeah. It's it's kind of crazy because like when Twitch first started, like you could literally play whatever you wanted on your streams like they they didn't detect anything back then and then like i remember like the first few people that started getting like uh hits on their channel and like the dmca stuff that most recently has blown up quite a bit and it's insane how it's insane how twitch has put in all of this investment in detecting uh when there's music being played that is going against the copyright but they can't detect racism or f bigotry or like terrible things happening in chat. 
How does that true. make even <laughs> any sense at all? Like, I feel like words are e- easier to like pick out or depict than sounds. sounds. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's insane to me that they've invested in that. And I I get it, I guess, from the legality uh, perspective because they have to, you know, protect their their. Um, I guess their company, because if they start allowing people to do that, they're going to have, you know, music labels and all these companies suing them. But yeah, my God, like at least use some of your resources towards that, because that is a big problem still. But yeah, like like you said, Christian, I think this is hopefully a good thing for for um, streamers that maybe this will help not get like instantly banned or like some of the crazy stories that I've read about from streamers who have basically lost their channel because they, you know, they had a song play that they didn't realize was playing in the background or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, interesting. Yeah, I hope it leads to like, like partnerships with streamers and stuff like that. Being able to, I just be a little bit more free with what they are playing and and stuff like that. I, I just don't want people to lose their channels because yeah. of the. Uh, stuff like that that's that's always a sucky thing so yeah like both of you said i hope it leads to a good good uh, environment on twitch but moving on to the next story a uh, unlikely partnership until uh, we saw this story quantic dream is possibly working on a star wars game quantic dreamed the developer behind heavy rain and detroit become humor is rumored to be what did i say detroit become humor is that what I just said? <laughs> yeah that, yep. detroit become human is rumored to be making a Star Wars game. The rumor has surfaced uh, courtesy French YouTuber uh, Gautos. Gautos? Am I? Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> Who reports that the studio has signed on with Disney. The following, uh, This follows the company's shift to multi-platform after a long history of working exclusively with Sony. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be... Interesting. I, there is also uh, some more rumors saying that this is going to kind of steer away from their choice-driven narrative sort of uh, backlog or uh, reputation that they've uh, made from themselves with Heavy Rain and, and Detroit Become Human, and this may steer towards more of a action open world sort of game, which is definitely new for Quantic Dream. Um, but I just can't imagine what that would look like because of, like I just said, all the games that they made before. Uh, but Daniel, what did you think about this uh, partnership, Quantic Dream making a Star Wars game? Does that excite you? Is that something that you're a little bit weary of? Yeah, <clears throat> it's interesting, right? Because like you, like you said, they have a long history with you know very deep storytelling um, in basically being like a, a playable movie. Essentially, it's it's something that you're kind of driving yourself through the story, but there's not really a whole lot of gameplay mechanics necessarily in their games. So it is interesting that they're looking, I guess, to do an action adventure type game with this. I hope that they try to make it still their own and not try to like, um, you know, copy off the success of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, for instance, because like they might pigeonhole themselves into being compared to that game where, you know, if they made something that is uh, traditional um, to their previous games, they would make something more original uh, that would stand out more, I feel like, next to something like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So I, I really, I really just hope it's something original. I just want to see something that um, isn't like the other Star Wars games that we have out there right now. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good point, Dan. I didn't even think about that because I, I do. I would love to see more original stories in Star Wars, and like if it's a different format, like I think that's more exciting than just another third person like linear action game because we we've seen those before we know what those look like even if they are cool and we love them like i i love fallen order as well uh as far as quantic dream making a star wars game i really hope it's not true don't get me wrong <laughs> like i enjoyed heavy rain uh i enjoyed a lot of parts of detroit become humor as as Rose said. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why i just clowned on you just now i'm sorry <laughs> but like dude <laughs> david cage is like an asshole yeah. Like he leading a company with like c- countless like allegations of misconduct in the workplace that are still ongoing, sort of resolved, but like they didn't actually resolve those issues in the workplace. Is writing people of color without like actually having voices uh, on that team concerning people of color and just like very shallow ideas expressed in like in their previous games? Like it, it's 
I don't want to call it like bad outright because it isn't right, but it, it is like concerning. So I don't know. I'm like very cautiously optimistic about what this project could look like. I just, I mean, I hope we just get like more voices, more unique voices, other than just like David Cage overpowering those said voices in in the Star Wars space. If that makes yeah. sense. Definitely. Yeah, I hear both of your takes. I I, I agree with most. Of, actually, both of your takes completely. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know if I want to see an open world game from them. And as as much as I am mixed on their previous games, I do like narrative choice driven sort of games. And the more that I listen to Daniel's uh, opinion on it, it's like, yeah, maybe they should just stick to that. I think that would be actually really interesting. And it does, and it would be original for a Star Wars game to just have like a, a telltale like story, just make your decisions and stuff like that would be interesting. But I also hear what your Christian saying, like. There's some issues that need to be resolved uh, there before uh, we start getting excited from a game from these guys. So, yeah, definitely here, both of you. Uh, but moving on to the next story, maybe something that we should be getting excited about. Definitely uh, maybe something that uh, Daniel is excited about. <laughs> but Halo co-creator teases new project, says it will be divisive, though. Uh, Marcus uh, Leto, is am I saying that right? Leto? Marcus Leto, Leto. yep. Plato, okay. The co-creator of the Halo universe and the original designer of Master Chief has teased a major career update. Uh, Leto uh, said on Twitter that he is in the process of making some pretty big decisions about his career, and not everyone will be will support what he's doing. Some of you will support it, some will not. I just ask that you all join me on this next on, <laughs> on this next leg of the journey. Leto wrote, uh, "It's going to be big." Um, so as you may or may not know, he did start a, a, a company or a studio called V1 Interactive, and he did get a game off the ground called Disintegration. Unfortunately, it didn't go super well, and the studio ended up uh, closing. But Leto, uh, to his like to his to praise him, he did a great job of like taking care of the employees that worked uh, for him and made sure they were taken care of and tried his best to like find jobs for those people who were who became jobless after that. So. In my books, he's a cool guy. Um, but Daniel, I know you're the Halo guy, so please, are, are you excited about about uh, the project from from Leto? Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited about this. Just to see like what what team he's going to join, because uh, yeah, I, he's a really great 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 dude. He's one of the few people, one of the few like individual developers that I actually follow on Twitter. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to see what he does. He's been teasing all of this stuff, like with, uh, Halo that he's been doing on his Twitter. He's, uh, redid the Master Chief model, uh, the Warthog and the original Halo CE, uh, ring to scale, um, in Unreal Engine, I think. And, uh, he completely rebuilt all of that from Halo 1, which is just insane to see like how good that looks now. And people were like clamoring for him to like uh, join 343 and do like a spin off story or something like uh, other than Infinite, which I thought sounded pretty cool if that would have happened. Um, or even he even uh, threw out the other day actually on Twitter and this got people like, oh my God, please. Uh, he, he threw out that uh, he should do like a, he would love to do a Halo CE remake, not just a remaster like Combat Evolved Anniversary was, but like retell that story in a brand new way, like Resident Evil 2 remake and um, all of that kind of stuff. You mean, you mean make it good? Christian, I'm, just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, but yeah, I think the the uh, the root of the story here is is uh, he's saying that it will be divisive uh, where what he's going to yeah. be doing, um, which that to me sounds like it's going to be something PlayStation related. That's my guess that he's going to join a PlayStation developer. That's just my guess because I don't know why else he would he would say like it would be divisive. Like some people may be excited, some may not be. Um, so yeah, but I'd be totally cool with that and down with that. I'd love to see him uh, working with some PlayStation IP and join a a really cool team on PlayStation. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what what's gonna happen. Christian, are, are you gonna speculate? Yeah. I was going to say the exact same thing. Uh, well, not not the PlayStation thing. I didn't even think about that until you said it. But yeah, when you said that this is kind of more like the tweet, you know, some of you will support it, some of you will not. That totally reads to me as I'm I'm not returning to like um, 343 or, or right. I guess returning to the Halo series. I, I mean, in my opinion, who knows? 
right? Which some, you, no, you, you go are back. you are correct about that because he someone tweeted at him like, "Are you joining 343? And he explicitly said, "No, this isn't related okay. to Halo." Yeah, but I will say like just hearing you talk about him is putting him on my radar. So like I'm very like I would love for Dan just to keep me updated on, <laughs> on where he goes. I'm sure this story will come back come back later next week or, or later than that. We'll see. Right. Yeah, I'm the the uh unreal stuff sounds cool like the just him i guess sounding like it's just doing passion projects of remaking that stuff in yeah. unreal engine yeah. so sounds like a very cool dude, guy very talented individual so i'm I'm looking forward to whatever wherever he lands or if he starts something else up i'm yeah looking curious looking forward <laughs> yeah definitely a cool story and yeah i want to i want to keep my keep, keep myself updated on what he's going to do next um but I, and you all know that I'm not the hugest Halo fan, but Daniel's saying just the idea of like a Halo, not not even from this guy, but just like in general, another Halo CE remake, like how Resident Evil was remade, sounds awesome. Like that would be mm-hmm. so cool, like modern day. Not that the Halos, they are making Halos right now, but it would just be so cool to see that first story like play now. So yeah, I would love that. I'd um, play it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. Sign them up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the next story a little bit of tv news neil Druckmann seemingly to direct episodes of the last of us hbo series neil Druckmann, the writer and creative director behind the last of us will seemingly direct at least one portion at least a portion of the upcoming hbo tv series based on the game an updated production uh list on the directors guild of canada lists Druckmann as one of five directors for the show's first season listed alongside Druckmann as directors for the series and our co-writer and showrunner Craig Mason, as well as uh, Jasmila Zbanek Sabin- and Peter Hoare. I'm having a, such a bad time with names today. With names? <laughs> yeah, so bad. Uh, they are joined by Kate Mir Balagov, who recently wrapped up directorial duties on, a show's, on the show's pilot episode. Um, I am so excited for this HBO series for The Last of Us. I love The Last of Us. Uh, I'm so happy that they're working with uh, multiple people who had their hands uh, on the game, which excites me even more that they have like people who really know the characters, really know uh, the story working on the TV series. It just inspires more confidence in me that the show is going to be pretty pretty good, at least. Uh, Christian, how does it? How do you? Are you excited for The Last of Us uh, TV show? And how does Druckmann directing episodes make you feel? I'm glad you asked, Ro. I'm glad the, I asked. The, the, the real story here is actually in between the lines of oh, the article. Oh, like and it's specifically with uh, Neil appearing on the list of the Directors Guild of Canada, which, if you are unfamiliar, is in fact a union. And if you remember to last week or two weeks ago, we were talking about Naughty Dog uh, co-presidents Evan Wells and, and Neil Druckmann, who I respect. I love them as creators. As bosses, not so much because they are very much anti-union in in the video game space. But all of a sudden, when he's he's moving on to this film project, <laughs> he's very much pro-union when he's a worker. So, yeah, yeah. Who, what gives, Neil? It, it's very yeah, it's it's interesting for sure. Um, hopefully, it, this is the way I interpreted it. Interpreted it is like hopefully, like, ah, he'll he'll realize how great unions are, or how yeah. they how changes great they can the be, and, and yeah. changes yeah come later um but on, on a fan level and like a like someone who wants to c- consume the last of us tv show content i think having neil as a co-director for one of or however they do these episodes is like fantastic i think it's going to lead to like a very high quality product that i can't wait to to experience in a, in a new format yeah uh i i echo those sentiments uh neil Neil's still a little bit on my uh, on my list because of what he did to a certain character in The Last of Us Part Two, but we won't discuss that here. Uh, and I still haven't played The Last of Us Two because I got that spoiled for me, and then I was like, I don't even want Aww, to play the game. That's a bummer. Well, that's a good game though. It was yeah. sort of purposely spoiled for me by a friend of mine because he's like man you're gonna be so pissed you're not even gonna want to play the game i'm like all right just tell me what happens and he told me and i was like you're right i don't want to play the game now (laughs) even though in hindsight i should i shouldn't have done that i should have just played it and formed my own opinion i still haven't played it i need to play it i love the last of us the first one um 
But yes, uh, anyways, Neil Druckmann being involved with this is probably a good thing. Uh, obviously, he has a deep knowledge of these characters, like you said, Christian. So yeah, I, this can only mean good things, I think. Definitely. And you should play The Last of Us. <laughs> I part should. Two. I yes. should. Part two. Yeah. <laughs> good game. Good, good game. Did you like RDR too? Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of thematic similarities between the two, so. I can see that. Another one of my, another one of my favorite games, RDR2. So good. It was amazing. Uh, but moving on to our next story, I'm reading from IGN, uh, PD Oten- Oneto. I should just stop reading names from <laughs> here on out. Uh, <laughs> executive in charge of Overwatch 2 leaves Blizzard. Another high-profile member of Activision Blizzard leaves the company. Um, so I didn't insert this story here, but there was another person who left, I believe, uh, the chief of something I, I should i should check it out i once i'm done reading this but somebody else did also leave but someone the one that we're reading about is the executive on overwatch 2 overwatch executive producer chaco sani is leaving blizzard entertainment on friday according to an activision spokesperson talking to blues uh, to bloomberg a blizzard spokesperson confirmed to bloomberg that chaco uh who oversees the whole overwatch franchise and developed uh, and development for the sequel will leave the company. Uh, quote, Blizzard has been an absolute privilege, has been an absolute privilege and one of the best experiences of my career. Uh, end quote, Sony said in an email to staff, according to Bloomberg. Blizzard also says that Overwatch 2 is nearing the end of production at the time of Sony's uh, exit. An update on Overwatch 2 will be provided later this month, and the timeline on it may have shifted concerning Overwatch 2 was reportedly still years out from launch. Um, so, of course, Blizzard would say something like that. Like, of course, Overwatch 2 is, is, is in good hands. Don't worry. She's not leaving at a bad time. We're good. Uh, but what do you guys think? Do you think this is uh, just her leaving because it is really over? Do you think it's because of the climate that's happening at Blizzard? Uh, Christian, what do you think about this departure? And maybe even the, the other one that I didn't didn't insert here. My, off the Off the cuff, my immediate thought was that it's probably like some kind of issue with development i don't think it's related to any of the like ongoing allegations of uh like misconduct or any kind of like workplace issue although i mean who knows it very well could be um somehow somehow i doubt it i I don't know this 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 seems unrelated i think especially when it's like i think if it were to be that reason i think that might have been in like implied somewhere or they they would have been reported so I don't know if you guys are with me on that front. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if like this is any cause for concern for Overwatch 2 or how the um, how the fan base feels about this. Because I know they were kind of lukewarm on Overwatch 2 in general, especially with some of the changes being um, made with in terms of like team balancing, like going from five to four players or whatever it was. So I don't know. Him, like them, him leaving, uh, Sonny leaving the Overwatch team. Uh, I would love to hear like fan reception which i'm going to go on twitter now and see see how they're feeling <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i agree with you christian I'm, I'm not sure one way or the other whether this uh is related to um everything that's happened as far as like you know activision blizzard as a company uh all those allegations came out and blizzard made some changes um so i feel like you know if there's one side of Activision, we've talked about this many times the last few weeks, but if there's one side of Activision Blizzard that's actually made an attempt at making changes, it's Blizzard. Activision has yet to make some big changes, and that's coming off the back of this week also, uh, finding out that uh, the, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission yeah. launched the yeah. investigation into <laughs> Activision Blizzard. And uh, CEO Bobby Kotick and other executives have also been subpoenaed for that as well. Bobby Kotick, in my opinion, is the biggest cancer there possibly is out there. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just, Activision in general does not sit well with me anymore. Reading, reading a lot of tweets now and people are saying, man, Overwatch 2 is going to suck, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. Yeah, I. They're sick. Yeah, geez, I, and I, I, as as we talked about earlier this year, I I don't plan to support it, but it does suck that that's where it seems to be going. Not only did this the sunny gentleman leave, but uh, what's his name, Jeff? I think. Uh, mm, yeah. Yeah, he, he's like he's the 
Jeff, yeah, he was the face of Overwatch, mm-hmm. the first one. The guy that everybody uh, saw as as the face, like the community guy, and he left. So, and I'm and I'm sure he said something similar. Where Overwatch is in good hands, and I'm sh- maybe it is, but just from a fan and outside uh, person looking in, it doesn't look super good. Um, but yeah, and the person, the other person that left uh, was the chief legal officer, uh, Claire Hart. So mm. yeah, there's there's that also. Uh, I don't blame them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on to the next story. Apple effectively bans Fortnite from the App Store for five years. I'm reading from IGN. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney revealed that Apple has rejected the company's request to reinstate Epic develop- Epic's developer account, effectively banning Fortnite from returning to the App Store following the legal battle between Epic and Apple. Sweeney revealed on social media... Uh, this morning, a letter sent to him by Apple rejecting Epic's request to have its developer program account reinstated. An Apple developer account, an Apple developer account, is required to develop and deliver apps on iOS. Furthermore, Apple says it will not consider request to reinstate Epic's account on, t- on quote until the district court's judgment becomes final and non-appealable unquote, which Sweeney says could be as long as five years. Um, so yeah, we we've read and talked about the Apple versus Epic uh, case for a while now. It feels like it's been going on for a while now, uh, where Epic uh, did intentionally break some rules on Apple Store, and and as a lot of us have said, it's it's kind of shady rules to in the first place, but they did break them. Um, but yeah, this resulted in Epic having to pay some money, Apple having to pay some money, but it seems like Epic is losing more than we thought uh daniel what did you think about epic being completely banned from the the app store yeah uh, it is interesting like you said ro uh epic definitely knowingly violated the terms of service with apple and um i think they did it in thinking that man we could make a big ch- like movement here you know we we do this we're the biggest app on the app store probably at the time uh like if we make this change and we force uh, Apple's hand to change their policy, didn't go that way, way for them. Uh, and they've actually, uh, I think they won like a couple of things in that uh, lawsuit with Apple, but Apple kind of, you know, still won the majority of that decision, I think. And mm-hmm. Epic ended up having to pay millions of dollars back to them for uh, sales in, in Fortnite. Um, that occurred when they did that whole payment portal thing. But it is interesting, though, because out of that whole uh, that whole thing that happened, the court ordered that Apple needs to um, allow outside payments options outside of the app store in order to allow people to buy things. So I think what Epic is saying here is, hey, we want to actually adhere to the new policy and we want to come back to the app store, but Apple's just like, nah, sorry, you broke our rules and we're in they're litigation. Very petty. Yeah. <laughs> so they're they're gonna make them wait, I guess, which yeah, that's kind of shitty. And I think most uh, not to go on about this, but most importantly in my eyes are that um the Unreal Engine is suffering the most from this because there's a lot of app developers that use Unreal Engine. Like Unreal Engine is the most versatile, besides maybe Unity, uh, game engine out there. So like without Epic having a App Store um, development tool set, they can't develop Unreal Engine for it. So what did developers mm-hmm. do at that point? Wow, that is something I hadn't even neither, considered yeah. or even or even knew about. That's that's insane. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can only speak to your earlier points that that's probably the only good thing that came out of this is that, uh, you know, the court deciding that Apple does need to integrate other forms of payment on their platform. I think that's probably the only win that us as consumers have seen from that. Uh, Apple or Epic getting banned for five years like that seems insane to me. I, I, how long has this court been going on? This case been, it's been like a year, if I remember right. Yeah. I think is that so. true? Yeah, I think it's about a year. I, that's sure insane people... yeah <laughs> that that is crazy and the the point that you brought up down with the unreal engine yeah me and christian like I, that just didn't occur to me at all that not only is fortnite being epic but uh being being affected but potentially 
future games, games that are already on there. Like that's that's mm-hmm. crazy. Um, but sorry, did I did I cut you off, Christian? Was there anything else you wanted to to add? No, as far as uh, Apple Apple or yeah yeah Fortnite being banned. No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. this has Isn't been hard just... to follow for hard to follow for me because it's been I, I think for me it's been more peripheral and kind of hard complicated to follow if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's like insane every time there's an update for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am totally with you with it being complicated to follow. It's only these stories that I'm like it comes back into my my space, right. I guess. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is still going on. And, oh yeah, it is. It's rough. It's rough for uh, the company is involved. But yeah. Do you guys think we'll see some kind of change with Apple? I don't know, having to not or not being able to take as much of a cut from these kinds of payments because they were taking thirty percent from like any kind of digital transaction, which which is a lot, especially if you're buying a bunch of V bucks, I guess. But yeah. I don't know if we'll see any change there. Yeah, because what Epic was doing is they were uh, they were making their V bucks thirty percent cheaper to buy directly from Epic uh, using their payment yeah. thing. So that's kind of I think that's what got them in trouble. But yeah, it is interesting, interesting, Christian, because uh, they're gonna Apple's still gonna demand that thirty percent cut. But then if somebody sends someone to another payment portal, they could probably charge less because they don't have to pay mm-hmm. that thirty percent to Apple. So. It's going to be interesting to see what ultimately ends up happening. For sure. Uh, speaking of things that we, I would love to see the end result for right now is the Persona 5 25th anniversary announcements uh, seem to be slowly rolling out now. Uh, the first of which was announced in a stream earlier this week. Uh, a lot of it is Japan-based, unfortunately, though. For instance, all past Persona animes will be available for streaming in Japan on Amazon Prime, Hulu, and other services. This announcement includes the Persona 4, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 series, the Persona 3 movie, and Persona Trinity Soul. Uh, in parentheses, Arthur author writes this series, the series' first anime, and that you've probably never heard of. Uh, will be accessible too. Moreover, a special orchestra concert celebrating the 25th anniversary will take place on November 21st at the Tokyo Opera City Hall. Hopefully it is streamed because I would love to watch that. Yeah. Uh, your favorite songs from the franchise will be classic. Uh, will get classical rearrangements. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Morgana, who is apparently now the face of these announcements, also teased at the very end, almost spoiled the next announcement apparently, uh, which is slated for later this month or later this year in December. We'll have to wait a few more months to find out what else is on the horizon for Persona. Um, but yeah, I, I I thought the concert was really cool. That that sounds awesome. I remember Sonic getting a similar yeah. uh, treatment this year, and that was freaking amazing. So I could only imagine what uh, the Persona series has to bring to the table on that front. Uh, Christian, how do you feel about what we've gotten so far? Do you think that we're in store for some bigger announcements, possibly, maybe? Who knows? Dude, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll save some stuff uh, for later discussion and topic of the show, which I think we might might touch on. But I think it's really cool to see them do this stuff for their fans. Like, Persona fans love Persona. And I think Atlas treats them, for the most part, like, pretty pretty, uh, lovingly. The only thing that kind of bums me out is, like, I would love to, like, be able to at least stream this concert or be able to engage with some of the stuff that they're doing outside of japan like obviously we're not we're not japan residents so that's kind of a shame on that front but i mean otherwise it seems really cool i'm I'm, december seems like a long time away from from now though you know what christian speak for yourself maybe i'm in japan right now we don't know for all i know yeah i don't know (laughs) uh yeah I think this is really cool. Uh, I'm not a Persona fan, but like, I wish there was more concerts for like video game music and that kind of stuff. Like, mm. I feel like we don't get that enough. And like, I would pay so much money for a freaking Halo concert. Oh, so good, yeah. so mm-hmm. good. Definitely. Uh, moving on to our next story, uh, Nintendo. Wait. Oh yeah, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You didn't tell me what you felt about this news. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I, I think I'm in the same boat where, yes, I wish I was in Japan right now to just experience the concert, go down to the concert, even watch the anime. Heck, I don't have a VPN. Maybe I should yeah. get one so I can experience some of these animes. Um, but yeah, it, it is a bummer that it's exclusive. That does happen a lot with these uh, Japanese company where they're just like, I don't know if the Westerners are going to really dig this stuff. Do we have to really put the money and effort into getting a venue in America and all that kind of stuff for, for something that we're not too sure about. But 
we would. We would very much enjoy that. We would buy out the theater, don't you worry. Uh, but I do understand why they're focusing on uh, a community that they know is definitely going to uh, come come out and, and see it in droves. So I get it, but at the same time, a little bit disappointing. I'm super excited for December to see whatever it might be. Hopefully it's something that involves the the other fans on the other side of the, the world. So excited for that, definitely. Yes. Uh, Persona 6 can't come soon enough. So <laughs> maybe that'll be their final announcement, uh, a trailer of some sort saying that it's going to come in another five years. But yeah, excited. A, P- a P6 announcement would immediately make me go and finish P5 Royal. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Then Atlas, get on it then. You know what you have to do. <laughs> Moving on to the next story, a new Nintendo Switch controller announcement come, could come this week. Uh, I'm reading from GameSpot, Otto Cr- uh, I, I, Otto, Otto, his name is Otto. Okay, I, I promised myself I wouldn't read any more names. <laughs> Nintendo is apparently working on yet another controller for the Switch, but details on the new peripheral are about as sparse as they can get. The new controller was revealed in an FCC filing originally inspired by VGC from Nintendo, which is simply titled Game Controller. Even more exciting is that the announcement is expected this week, according to a separate filing by the FCC that appears to have been removed after VGC spotted it. One of the bits of information that can currently be found in the filing is that the controller will be wireless, connecting to the Switch via Bluetooth. Everything else about the controller, including its schematics, user manual, and block diagram, has been made confidential at the request of Nintendo. So, that's uh, interesting news, considering that we have a Nintendo Direct tomorrow. Maybe this is where they unveil it. Maybe not. We still have an entire week to go. Um, but reading on other sites, uh, it was it was said that it is to be revealed in the next six months or so. So, it doesn't necessarily mean it's coming this week. Uh, maybe there's been an update where it is coming this week. But what I've also read is that we have the rest of the year and right. potentially next year to get this news. Uh, but Daniel, what do you think of a new Nintendo uh, controller? Do you think it's just another version of a Joy-Con? Maybe it's a something completely different, a new Pro version, a new Pro's Pro controller. What do, What do you think? Yeah, uh, maybe it'll be a Joy-Con that doesn't have drift. Maybe yeah. that'll. <laughs> oh, <I mean>, got him! <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, I don't know what other controller. Like, what else are they gonna do unless they do some kind of like custom controller for like a, a driving wheel or something? Yeah. I don't know. It's just, or even like a driving wheel. You just put the the uh, switch, per, the current switch controller into a driving wheel like they did with the Wii, Wii and Wii U days. So I don't even know that they would need something like that. So like, I don't even know what. What else this could be other than a revision to the Joy Cons? Because um, I feel like the Pro controller already is, you know, it's already good for what it's, you know, for. It, it it doesn't necessarily need a next evolution, I guess, or at least not right now. Um, but yeah, fix the drift. Fix the drift. Hashtag fix the drift. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Christian? You will hear more about this from me in topic okay. of the show Ooh. Sounds, good. <laughs> sounds good yeah i well i don't want to say anything because it may be potentially what you're going to say so i'll i'll, I'll wait until later to, to talk just to you about say what it. You... <laughs> just say it bro. i i, I guess it. i was just going to say what what kind of what daniel was saying where i i don't know what it could be i think they should focus on the drift issue maybe and then fix that for the joy cons issue and that would be something that i would enjoy more um, but the only thing that comes to mind is potentially a game that hasn't been announced yet that a new controller would work with. Like like you said, like the Mario Kart Wii U controller, but something even more interesting, I guess, that just goes with a game. So that's that's where my head's at with it. You know what? I, I guess I can give off okay. some too, since, since you guys... Sure. If it isn't <laughs> what I think it might be and what mm-hmm. Twitter has kind of been leading me to think... Then I think for sure you guys are onto something with a new kind of Joy-Con controller because I guess if we already we're having the OLED model of the Switch come out soon, if the Pro model does end up being true, then it would maybe make sense for them to have like some kind of Pro Switch controllers to go along with that. Um, maybe this could be an indication of that. I don't think we would probably see it tomorrow if that's the case. Um, Ah, now, I'm, now I'm really thinking it could be a Joy-Con controller, but <laughs> if it's the other thing, it might be really cool, which you'll hear about in Tots. Awesome. 
And the tots. Right. Tater tots. Speaking of things we will probably never hear about in a very long time, Titanfall 3 has been confirmed not to be in the works at Respawn, uh, which some people probably already knew, but fans are just like, you gotta, you gotta make Titanfall 3, please make it. And they're saying, no, we're not making it right now. We've got way too much on, my, on our plate. Uh, I'm reading from PSU. Uh, dot com. Titanfall 3 has been rumored to be in development for the for what feels like some time now, but it's becoming clear that any of those rumors, even uh, recent ones, are just not true, as Respawn has once again come out and denied that they're working on Titanfall 3 in any way. The news comes from their website, Dex... Dexter Toe, uh, which respo- reports that Respawn community coordinator Jason Garza, uh, when asked about Titanfall 3 in a live stream, said, don't get your hopes up, man. I've been, uh, I've said this before. We don't have anything in the works. There's nothing. There's nothing there. We've got too many other games in the works right now. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of Titanfall fans out there who are a little bit sad that they're not getting a Titanfall 3 anytime soon. Christian is one of those. Daniel is one of those. I am one of those. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a bummer for sure. Um, yeah, what do you, what do you guys think? Do you think we will ever get a Titanfall 3, Daniel? Uh, I I hope so, but I don't know. And the interesting part that people always forget about 2019, EA said that Respawn was releasing a new entry in the Titanfall universe in fall 2019. This was after Apex Legends was announced and are actually already out. And they were like, yeah, new entry in the Titanfall universe is coming this fall. Never came out, never happened. Where did that game go? Like, what did that become? I'm, I suspect that that scrapped w- it. Yeah, <laughs> I suspect that they took assets from that and brought them into Apex. Would be my guess, mm-hmm. which is kind of unfortunate. I, I like Apex a lot. I, I had a lot of fun with it when it came out, but like, I want to see more in the Titanfall universe. It's such a different, you know. It has similar guns. It has similar, you know, feeling gameplay wise, but. It's uh, such a different game, like with the Titans. Like it's so fun to get in that Titan and just pound people's faces with a mechanical robot arm. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to see Titanfall come back, but I don't know. You know what? Originally, I was going to say there's a, not a chance in hell we ever see Titanfall two, or, or sorry, a, a new Titanfall game ever come out, especially with Apex, you know, printing money for for EA on that front. Um. Because, I don't know, EA just is, doesn't really like bringing back fan-favorite franchises. They tried it once with Mirror's Edge, and I was like, look, we tried it, and it didn't work out for us. But uh, then again, we're getting Dead another Space. skate. Skate? Yeah, yeah, Dead Space is coming yeah. back. We're getting another skate game. So I guess Never Say Never is is the takeaway for here. Mm-hmm. But, man, I am so... We, we, we like to like tout that EA was the reason why Titanfall 2 suffered. But from conversations that I've had, I think with Dan, maybe on the podcast here or from or with other people, I'm not, I can't remember. It sort of was a little bit of Respawn's fault for trying to push for the fall date when it first released. Like they, they really wanted to stick to that calendar year. I think, was it 2018 when Titanfall 2 released? I can't remember the exact year. That sounds about right. Yeah. Because uh, it, it 2016. Really... 2016. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <Just look> <laughs> So, like, they, they re- were really adamant about release- releasing in the fall of that calendar year, which is a bummer because, you know, fall that year, fall of any year is usually, you know, the other shooters, which was, I think, at that point, the Call of Duties, and I think Battlefield was that year as well. Yep. So, it sucks, but, I mean, every time it, uh, Titanfall goes on sale, people buy it again. They, there's a little resurgence of people talking about it, so... I, I think never say never is the answer. We hopefully one day we see it come back in some meaningful way. I would love that. All right. So moving on to the next story, I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker. You guys can give me your, your thoughts if you have any, uh, but guardians of the galaxy uh, previews have been uh, released. I'm just going to read a quick little excerpt from the venture beat article that I've got here. Uh, I'm reading from VentureBeat, and the author is Jeff Grubb, of course. Uh, I had fun with Guardians of the Galaxy. It had a lot going on. Its most obvious point of comparison is the campaign from Marvel's Avengers. If you enjoyed the writing and action in that, you'll like it a lot. He also says, Guardians of the Galaxy is doing its best to give, th- give you the thrills you'd expect from a game in that universe. 
And like almost every movie licensed game that I've ever played, it's mostly mimicking its superior source material. And yet, I don't know that I care. I think the game uh, is fun enough that I'm just happy to be hanging out with these characters and doing the stuff that Guardians do. Um, something, something like this doesn't need to end up as a Game of the Year contender. It just needs to make Guardians of the Galaxy fans smile, and I came out smiling. So that's uh, some pretty, you know, good news. Not like you said, not a Game of the Year contender by any stretch of the imagination, but fans will more than likely enjoy it. Um, I just want to know, uh, Christian, are you excited for this uh, Guardians of the Galaxy game? And do these previews, if you saw them, spark you know more <laughs> uh, hope for yeah. <laughs> for it? Yeah, I was excited about it for one. When- when it was revealed at E3 this year. Uh, and then I listened to some previews today, this morning while I was like working and stuff. And, and everything they said about it just seems like a, f- a really great and fun time. Um, like commanding uh, Star-Lord and the rest of the Guardians and having conversations with, about, with them and like determining little short scenarios and how the mission goes. I think sounds really exciting. Um, and like Jeff makes a great point about not every game needs to be game of the year material. You know, I kind of went into spoilers, I guess, for what we're playing. But I, I went into Kena with that like um, mentality of like, let's see what this game ranks in game of the year. And like the the sooner I got away from that mentality, the more I started actually enjoying the game as it is and not as what it in my head it should have been. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So if I can carry that same mentality with Guardians and it's for sure going to be a good time. I don't doubt it. Yeah, I agree with Christian completely. Um, and like when this was first revealed, it was a big shock because I, I don't think anyone anyone necessarily expected a Guardians of the Galaxy game to come out of nowhere. But um, I'm I'm just excited to see more Marvel properties uh, being made into games. I think uh, I love it so much. I love the MCU, and uh, I just love seeing this stuff. Uh, and obviously, I love ins- what Insomniac's doing with Spider Man and upcoming Wolverine whenever that comes out. But uh, it's cool to get this this type of game into more people's hands, and um, yeah, I just want to see you know what the what the previews, the final previews, and like when, what happens when the game's out, and see what people's impressions are, and go from there. But yeah, cautiously yeah. optimistic. Yes, I think I'm I think I'm in the same boat. Cautiously opt- optimistic. I love the story uh, base choices that they have going on. The combat seems kind of hit or miss for me from what I've seen so far, but the overall tone and story seems like to be up my alley and something that I would enjoy. So yeah, cautiously optimistic from what I've seen so far. Uh, but moving on to the next story, Kenna Bridge of Spirits news. Uh, here are some review scores I'm pulling from Nebellion on Twitter. It's getting a lot of good good, good reviews. Gamesview gave it a 10. Dual Shockers gave it a 10. Game Informer gave it a 9. Digital Trends Screen Rant and uh, Digital Trends and Screen Rant gave it a 4.5. The Gamer gave it a 4 uh, out of 5. And IGN, Destructoid, and Press Start all gave it an 8. So it's getting some pretty uh, pretty high praise from uh, around the industry. It's also getting some new skins in Fall Guys. If anybody out there is still playing Fall Guys, expect some <laughs> Kenna sprint, uh, skins. And uh, some The Rot, I think they're called. The Rot uh, as well. You could dress your bean up in one of those guys. So that's pretty cool. Uh, again, if you're still playing Fall Guys, expect those to be in the store soon. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure Christian, you'll be able to tell us more about your thoughts uh, in games we're playing. Uh, but Daniel, are are you planning to check out Kenna soon? Yeah, uh, I'm interested in it. Uh, I think it looks lo- a freaking beautiful game. Um, and I did read some of the complaints online of people saying like, this is a, like a PS2 game, except in a modern you know tone. I'm like, well, it certainly that- looks like one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't. Yeah. That's what's good about it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't actually sound too bad. Actually, yeah, like you guys. I mean, I, there's certain elements of that era that I feel like would be cool to have like a comeback. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested to maybe check this out. I may not for a little bit because I still have to beat you know Ratchet and Clank, which I still haven't played since like many weeks ago. Uh, but That's yeah, okay. mm, not doing well. I think Kana Kana might be a better game than Ratchet. I, I'm not oh, sure yet. I'm just putting that. I'm putting that out there. I'm, I don't know yet. I like it. Wow, like it. hot takes. I'm gonna go through this last story really quick because I don't know if you guys are super SpongeBob fans or anything, but maybe you stop me if you are. THQ Nordic announces a new SpongeBob SquarePants game, The Cosmic Shake. Uh, this is coming off the heels of their amazing press conference uh, stream that they did. Wow, that was so good. Um, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's satire, right? 
That is, <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Extreme sarcasm. <laughs> Yeah, that was terrible. It, the, the whole the whole uh, like stream actually leaked like all the games that they had to announce were just on the internet as soon as they went live. It's kind of a bummer for them, but good for everybody who was watching. So they didn't have to sit through that. Yeah. But anyway, so, <laughs> supposedly the roster for uh, Nickelodeon All Stars leaked today as well, like the entire Ooh. roster. Oh, I didn't I didn't actually better click better on it and catch it. <laughs> yeah. That alone would have been a better show if they just <laughs> chose the rest of the characters. <laughs> I think that uh, game actually looks kind of cool, the fighter game, uh, Nickelodeon yeah. All Stars. But we'll see Definitely. what happens. We mm-hmm. will see. But moving on to a returning segment, things that we're working on. Christian, I know you released a little video. Tell us more. Yeah. Uh, funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Uh, <laughs> I just released uh, my first ever venture into video essays. It's like a mega hefty video on Death Stranding and a little literary theory on like the new weird and how those two intersect it's very lit nerdy and and honestly it's a little dry there's like it's a there's a small niche audience there that'll enjoy it but if that if that at all sounds interesting to you uh, you can check that out on twitter uh, at the penultimate conquest it's that stranding is a weird game and you'll find that there uh so i'm probably going to continue working on video essays in fact i've already got two others that i've been working on uh, the other two are a lot shorter. The Death Stranding one's long, and the two ones that I'm working on are all around like 15 minutes ish, and they're a lot more conversational. So those should be exciting. Wait, nice. I, I'm getting word here. Uh, I think the official podcast Twitter account just tweeted that out. So if you want to nice. watch that, Ooh. check it out. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So yeah, pen up, pen out to the conquest on Twitter or podcast PXN. You'll be able to find Christian's video. Heck yeah. Uh, Daniel, is there anything that you're working on right now? <laughs> well, I might as well just <laughs> I, tell I you now. On you guys, I, know. I might as well just tell you now. I'm working <laughs> on my Xbox Series S. This is just the box. The Series S is set up over here already. You can't see it, but uh, small console. My goodness, yes. I was <laughs> like everyone says how small the console is, but my God, I put a, a picture on Twitter because I was like, look how small this thing is it's <laughs> tiny i was so sh- shocked at like how small it is compared to the series x and the funny thing is i put it in my entertainment center next to my ps5 and the length of it is the same as the width of the ps5 which is what? insane <laughs> yeah oh that's crazy yeah so that's what i've been working on setting that up that's because, pretty small yeah it's, it's pretty small pretty oh, small man that's um, oh. oh man, that's sad. <laughs> sad. <laughs> uh, but the thing that I'm working on, I, as I have mentioned a little bit on other podcasts and this podcast, I'm work, I'm focusing a little bit more on my drawing and my art. I'm working on a eastward drawing that I'm having a lot of fun drawing right now, and I'll talk about in the games that we're playing as well. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what we're working on. Expect those projects to be released in the future. Definitely <laughs> check us out. Uh, but moving on to the games that we're playing, Daniel. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to need some Alex Chen and Steph Gingrich fan art from you like okay. yesterday. So <laughs> I, I did actually get make it. A, I did make a Steph one on, and it's on my Twitter. I, I mean, I made an Alex one and I made a Steph one, but not uh, with them together. But I have an Alex and did Steph I miss this? one. Steph one. They're on my. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that out. Okay, <laughs> um but daniel what have yes. you been working on or playing <laughs> i have been playing the master chief play. uh no actually with my series x dying uh which i didn't discuss why i got my series s it's because the series x died i had to send it in for repair which luckily it's still within the first year um and so i i have to send that in so I've been continuing playing Rust with one of my friends, even though I was like, all right, I need to get out of this soon because I have like a backlog of a million games I need to play. I got Master Chief Collection. I got Halo Insider coming this weekend for Halo Infinite, and everyone's invited, so hopefully you guys signed up for it because everyone's invited if you signed up for it. Christian, that face tells me you didn't (laughs) sign up for it. And Ro, you didn't (laughs) sign up for it either. I didn't know it was a thing. Gosh! I'm sorry. I can wait till December. Uh, all right. Or January. All right. Well, no, oh. no. I'm it's not get getting angry. delayed again, Christian. Get out of here. <laughs> sorry about your Xbox, though. That's kind of a bummer. But yeah. Glad it's done to retail. And you have the other Xbox coming anyway, so I, I guess it's... Yes. Yeah. What have you been uh, playing, Christian? 
Yeah, I, I beat Deathloop. I talked a little bit about that last week. It's still probably the same thoughts in that I don't I'm not as high on it as much as everyone else was. I think there's a I've, as far as game like game, gameplay and level design, I think that stuff is all like phenomenal and like legit like masterfully done. It's awesome. Uh ooh, the uh like aesthetic and the style of that game is like so amazing and like awesome to see when you're actually like in in game. Uh, the narrative just never came together and even worse like the way it ends up unfolding and the ending without like i I can't i don't want to spoil that it just does not hit it just uh, totally unravels which is kind of a shame for me who enjoys games with like very int- intricate and like complex or just interesting narratives in general so on that front i was a little disappointed still a fantastic game probably even in the, my top five for, of games that i played this year so it's like i'm not too negative on death loop i'm just gonna <laughs> put that out there um, and then I started Kena the other night, and I was like, ah, this does kind of play like a PS2 game. Like, I, it was, I wasn't enjoying it as much, and it was kind of weird getting, like, gameplay and then, like, very much cutscenes that were, you could tell, were, like, rendered beforehand and just kind of pasted in to, mm-hmm. like, have, like, this a narrative to tie together. And then it sort of just clicked. Like, I, I kind of I kind of accepted it for what it was and enjoyed myself and was surprised at how much better it actually got as I progressed through the game. I'm finishing up the first area now, uh, and it's, like, so beautiful. Even, like, the moments where I got, like, the first, like, I would call it, like, the actual upgrade you get in the game um, was, like, such a kind of an emotional moment, and it was, like, really well done. Then, like, now it's kind of all I'm thinking about, and I don't know. Like, I'm I'm very much looking forward to playing more tonight. The bosses, though are still very much way too hard. Why is it this hard in this game? I don't understand, but otherwise, fantastic game. Um, all right, well, the game that I've been playing is Eastward. The only game that I've been playing recently, not even some Destiny 2 guys. I've just been in Gross, just just in this game, in Eastward. So Eastward is a little game that I've been very excited for for a very long time. And it finally released, uh, I think, the week before or last week. I don't even remember when it released. Um, but it's awesome. It's so good so far. Um, it's a pixel action RPG uh, by the publisher Chucklefish, by the developer Pixpill. And the, the again, the pixel art is so beautiful. Uh, the story is really interesting. It started off a little bit slow, but the world from the get-go was so interesting that I just wanted to learn more about the characters. And from there, all the characters are so cool. I, I tweeted on Twitter after I deleted all my tweets, but I tweeted on Twitter that <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted that I, I I I am spending so much time just talking to every single character and that just speaks to how much I'm enjoying the world because I don't usually do that in especially games like this, that I just I want to talk to every single character that's there just to learn a little bit more about whether it be the character or the world. So cool. Um but I'm only on yeah, go ahead Christian, sir. No, sorry, keep going and I'll ask after. I- yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm only on chapter two. It seems to be a very long game. I think there's seven chapters, and each chapter is pretty pretty hefty, which I, I'm really liking. Uh, it gives you enough time to, again, enjoy the characters, enjoy the setting that you're in at that particular character, and just learn more about the world. The gameplay is very Zelda-like, where it's it's top-down, and, and when you're fighting enemies, you're just, like, slashing your sword, just pressing a button. There's a little bit more thought into it with, with you switching your uh weapons on the fly as well so that's cool i guess zelda does that too with the, all the tools that you have that link has so i really like that and dare i say it i it reminds me of like the original final fantasy 7 with like the 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 random fun interaction that you have with characters like the the cross-dressing scene with cloud it has moments like that that i really really like um but yeah eastward i would suggest you check it out especially if you're a fan of uh Earthbound or Final Fantasy VII, definitely check it out. Definitely. But yes, Christian, what was your question? I'm sorry. Yes. Well, I guess first of all, uh, I want to do point out that on September 21st at 10:19 a.m., Ro uh, very lovingly tweeted, "Please don't sleep on Eastward game." So yes. shout out to Ro, don't. still still pushing that that agenda yes. forward. With respect <laughs> to Ro. Uh, second, I know we talked about how like not every game has to be a game of the year contender. Yeah. That said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could you could you see this game for what you played so far uh, potentially end up on like a game of the year shortlist for you? Um, yes, I could. Uh, I I think that also has to do with how many games I finished this year, which are not <laughs> mm-hmm. many. Um, so it, potentially, if I play Deathloop, Ratchet and Clank stuff like that, maybe it'll be different. 
but I, I have a strong feeling that I wouldn't because I'm really enjoying this game a lot. So I think it would be in my top five, top ten, regardless of how many games I finish or didn't finish this year. Um, but yeah, definitely enjoying it. We'll, we'll have to see once I reach more chapters. Again, I'm only on chapter two, but so far I'm really, really digging it. Nice. Now, speaking of tweets, Roro, you deleted all your tweets. So yeah. do you want to tell the audience about those loving tweets that you tweeted about me and Christian? You know, you, you said we're the yes. best ever or something like that before you yes. deleted all of the tweets. For that, I do apologize. <laughs> that is now just gone forever. All the, the love and support I, I, I definitely tweeted on my no. Twitter. <laughs> uh, Bro must be a Sagittarius the way he's breaking my heart. <laughs> Don't worry. They, those tweets will return. Don't worry. In a future episode or a future installment on my Twitter, they will return. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, moving in to the topic of the show, we are finally here. Nintendo Direct is going to be tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be 40 minutes long, and Nintendo says they're going to be focusing on winter game releases. So, as we talked about before, even the pre-show, or maybe in the pre-show, we're having a little bit of trouble, you know, predicting what might be releasing in the winter of this year. Uh, but I still think it'll be fun to maybe even throw out some wild ones. Maybe you guys have some, some smart oh, yeah. ones too, but I just want to have some fun. It's Nintendo for crying out loud. We, we never really know what we're going to get with them. So maybe we'll get some crazy stuff. Um, I don't know how much you guys uh, were able to predict. I have a couple. I wouldn't say I have a lot, but I've got a couple. Uh, but I don't know how we went. Do you want to go like in a circle, Daniel, Christian, me, or Christian, Daniel, me, all that kind of stuff? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, okay. I have a couple as well, so I don't care how we do it either. Okay. I, I will say this before we even start. I, I yes. do think, like for tomorrow's direct, I I think it might be not any kind of like major huge reveals. If anything, it might be like more of a like here are the indies that were at E three and now we're announcing them that they are indeed launching on on Switch and like that's obviously very exciting for yeah. a, a lot of Switch users. I think that stuff is very possible. A lot of uh, Maybe ports coming to, uh, to Switch might be kind of their motive for tomorrow. I don't think we're going to get any huge announcements. That said, I do have some wild predictions. Yeah. So. <laughs> we always do. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, Christian, why don't you start us off? What, what do you got? I have to start off just mild, you know, just kind of something kind of weaker here. So some more DLC for Mario Golf. Uh, so we're going to get a new course. And probably something that was like for a game on the Switch. So I'm, my immediate reaction was like probably a Luigi's Mansion inspired course. Or who knows, maybe maybe even like a Mario Odyssey. Another Mario Odyssey course or a Galaxy course. <gasps> Possibilities are out there. I love it. I love it. Daniel? Uh, I'm... Yeah. Uh, I... I, I we're not going to I don't think we're going to get anything crazy. However, I'm going to start with my crazy one and just say we're going to get some crazy brand new IP weirdness that game and I'm going to be very generic with this that we're like what the hell is this Nintendo and it's going to release this fall. They're just going to be like, "Yep, here you go." Like this I don't is why Dan wins. Do <laughs> you hear this prediction? A game will be shown. He just said a game wait, will be shown. Wait, wait, all right. It has to be super weird and I don't know. Frick, I didn't. I couldn't think of anything. So I came the up the most with... relative prediction you could ever make. A weird <laughs> game is shown. I okay, could, Dan. I, okay. <laughs> I could attribute any game they announced and say, "Oh yeah, that's a weird game. It has this in here." Yeah, you're right, Christian. That's a cop out. Uh, I need to. I don't know. I'll I just don't it. know what I'll we're gonna. Get. I don't know what we're gonna get. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, wait. How's this? How's this? It's not gonna be one of their like franchises, you know, that we we see. Like, it's not gonna be Mario Bowser, like Wario. It's not gonna be any of the established. Fran- it's a brand new IP, just crazy bananas. And if it's not like outlandish, like crazy, don't give me the point. Put it on the record. Right. Sure. You had your bananas. <laughs> 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 All right. My first prediction. Um, thinking about which one I should go with. I, I'll go with one that's a little bit more tame, but I think a little interesting. There's a game called Demon Turf that is a 3D platformer. Yes. And I think they they've been in development for a while, and they, it's coming to a bunch of console, a bunch of 
systems, but I think Switch is like one of those systems that I think it would be paired really well with. Uh, so I think they're gonna do a little announcement there and announce a, a date. It, it was supposed to come out. It is supposed to come out this year. It was supposed to come out mm-hmm. in the summer. Uh, summer last day of summer is today, <laughs> I think. Um, Yesterday. So, yeah. So it didn't come out in the summer, <laughs> um, which is totally fine. They have to perfect their 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 demon turf game. But I can definitely see them showing up here and saying, "Hey, we're just so you remember us. We're coming to the Switch, and this is when we're coming." Uh, and yeah, I can see Demon Turf showing up in uh, an indie game. Nintendo loves to show off their nindies, so I can see Demon Turf showing up. That's a random one, but I think one that I feel safe predicting. Yeah, there's a tons of indies uh, that I could see coming to Switch. Not even as predictions, you're just like just chatting with you, I guess. Like Bird Problems, Garden Story. Uh, Garden I don't know Story if, uh, is on like... Switch now. Oh, it is. Yeah, it did come out already. Oh shoot! Yeah, <laughs> yes, you should get it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of like just just look at your like probable wish list on Steam, and there's like oh there's a bunch of indie games that could probably come to the Switch anytime soon. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Uh, Christian, what is your next one? Getting uh getting bolder here. Yes. Yeah, I mean this is pretty bold already because uh, whatever I'll just say it. Uh, Hollow Knight Silk Song gets a, gets in a trailer. Oh, Hollow Knight Silk Song, rel- yeah, and a release yeah. date for oh. it. yeah. It's oh. like if it's coming this de- December, <laughs> it's happening. Damn, I wrote that down, but I I wrote it down to like if you didn't predict it, which I'm so silly. It's a thing that you wouldn't predict if you love Hollow Knight. So <laughs> I just wrote it down to like start the conversation, but I I didn't think it would be there because God, I hope it is. I hope it is for you, Christian. I hope it is. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, Daniel, what is your next prediction, man? I had some written down here, and I just feel Christian chastising me because they're so they're they're I mean no brainer. So I'm not gonna do those. However, we haven't gotten the last reveal of the Smash Brothers character, right? Oh, we have not. Okay, nope. that's yeah. tomorrow for sure. The next character, yes, <laughs> of Smash Brothers revealed as oh. Master Chief. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> That's that is crazy. crazy. That'd be crazy. It's probably not going to happen, but we'll put it out there. <laughs> yeah, maybe not Master Chief, but I'm sure they're going to announce the the next the next character mm-hmm. tomorrow. Um, do you guys think we'll get another fighter pass, or is this really the end? Did he tell the truth? This is the end. Smash DLC. Sakurai wasn't lying to us. Let him rest, damn it. <laughs> Let the man rest. He wants to retire for crying out loud. Yeah. Let him rest. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, they've already got like what over a hundred oh characters God. in the game. It's insane. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We've we've had enough characters for a very long time, so he's definitely treating us with just one more, I guess. So very it's cool. Not enough for real. <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, but my next one, I did have like uh, the uh, final Smash character on here as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, my next one is one that. I feel like is a tame one, but at the same time, I've I've lost all hope. I don't know if they're ever going to come back to revisit this game at this point. But Animal Crossing New Horizons gets an update. I hope anything, <laughs> For the love of God, anything, please. All right, a lot of Animal Crossing people want Brewster to come back from uh, New Leaf. Please, right? That's all. That's it. Just a build. Just let us build a cafe and let us go there in the nighttime. That's it. That's all we want. Please, Nintendo. That's it. Be able to craft your own uh, coffee. That's asking for more. That's all I want. But the only thing that I want is the cafe to be there. I would love us to be able to craft our own coffee and stuff like that. But as long as the cafe is there, I'm happy. Um, besides that, I if it, if it's not a Brewster update, I'm sure there'll be a smaller update, like some new Christmas items or Halloween is right around the corner and tease us with some new Halloween items and stuff. So. I'm sure Animal Crossing is going to be there in some format, but I predict a bigger update, hopefully, uh, is going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Christian, what do you got? Well, I'm glad we... Yes. Yeah. No, I've got three more. Oh, sweet. Uh, <laughs> more than that, but... <laughs> uh, I'm glad Dan brought up the conversation about the last fighter in, in, the, in the pack here. Uh, listen, it's not going to be Sora. I'm sorry, Cam Hawkins. It's not going to be Crash Bandicoot. It won't be Shovel Knight, although that does seem pretty likely, Shovel Knight. Mm. 
Uh, and this comes off the back of my uh, Silk Song prediction. Uh, the Knight from Hollow Knight will be the last fighter in, that would in, be so in cool. Smash. That would be awesome. I'd love that. And I haven't even beaten Hollow Knight yet. That's, he's such a cool character. That would be yeah. cool. I love that. Um, I, I I have one left, guys. This okay. is all I can muster because I'm like I don't okay. know, scratch it. Because I had <laughs> I had I wanted to, I want to tell you I had on my list stuff like uh, Metroid Dread gameplay, game which I feel like that's a shoe in, and Mario Party <laughs> gameplay, which that's a shoe in. I feel like so this last one, I feel like we're going to get a one Wii U game ported it over to switch and guys i looked it up there are only nine first party wii u games that are not yet ported to the nintendo switch and i have Mario Party eight what or nine sorry keep going keep going oh okay i got uh, excited <laughs> i have an idea of what i think would be cool so the legend of zelda wind waker hd and the Legend nice. of Zelda Twilight Princess e- HD combined in one package on the Switch. Boom. Please. Not a chance God, in please. hell, but please, man, I would love <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah. As we talked about with the Legend of Zelda 35 anniversary earlier this year, I feel like they're just doing Skyward Sword as terrible. Not as terrible as that is. Just for, just for my personal Zelda taste, it's terrible. But... I feel like that's it for them. They're just like, we did our 35th anniversary thing, and that's, we're good. Our hands are tied, even though they're not. They could totally just, please do that. I would love that, too. Especially if it's Wind Waker. It's in, in there. That's my favorite Zelda game. I love Wind yeah, Waker so much. Yeah, top three, easy. Yeah. Um, in that case, I will do one more as well. And Christian, maybe you could end with one yeah, more. Yeah, I'll do one more, yeah. Okay. So, uh... I'll say the ones that I, I don't want to... I was going to say Splatoon 3 gameplay is going to be there. Probably not. Um, Bayonetta 3, I think I can confirm that it's not going to be there. That was another one that I was going to say. Yeah, it's not yeah. probably not going to be there. No way. <laughs> when was that way. game announced? Like, what, four so years ago or something? It's insane. Maybe more. Yeah. yeah, 2016, I think. But yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, but I think my... I'm going to end on uh, GBA Online is a thing like or not gba game boy not game boy advance but uh it's 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 a thing uh it's coming to the online nintendo online service they're going to start introducing that but what i think is actually more likely is a couple of jeep game boy hits are going to be on the eShop, and they're going to make us pay for it some like maybe some pokemon crystal or, or something i don't know uh besides that <laughs> that's that's kind of my extent of my game boy knowledge the pokemon games but yeah i could see them what I would love, again, is to have some G- G- Game Boy games integrated into the online system. What I think is more likely, though, is they're going to port some G- Game Boy games onto the actual eShop. E- e- uh, but yeah, that's that's my yeah. final prediction. Nice. That one seems more plausible than my final prediction. Which is, is it? and it harkens back to the news story from uh, from earlier about the new yes. Nintendo controller. Right. Nibel tweeted out that the um, the model number for the new controller is Hack Dash Zero Four Three, and then in parentheses he wrote that Hacks Dash O Four Two was the wireless SNES controller, and then that, uh, I think if you read on like O Four One was like an NES controller, uh, mm-hmm. like for the minis I think. So if this model number is any indication then 043 could be the rumored n64 mini so my final prediction is that the n64 mini is real and that's nintendo's big holiday product heck yeah that would be awesome what even more could what if it is like uh an n64 controller but like we were reporting for the switch and it is bluetooth and n64 games are coming to the online service and then we get like a nice controller that's even with, better. Play those games. That'd be so awesome. That would but be it, smarter, yeah. but that doesn't make as much money no, as an N64 Mini. Let's be real. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm 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 probably gonna stick with with yours. I think yours is the the more probable one. Nintendo 64 Mini. I'm gonna throw out my two like honorable mentions. I guess that don't count, but like I would love to see this happen. Uh, a new beautiful Joe game. Just please bring back beautiful Joe. Yes. God damn it, it's been <laughs> so long. Uh, game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Donkey Kong, the new Donkey Kong title is revealed. Ooh, Whether that's 3D or 2D, I don't know, but like a new Donkey Kong game is revealed. Yeah. Wow. Nice. 
that'd be cool. That has been rumored for a while too, I think. So maybe mm-hmm. finally we get the announcement. Um, but yeah, those are our predictions. Thank you, Daniel, for writing it down in the, the doc. So we got those I, recorded I, there. <laughs> I failed a little bit. I'll talk to you guys after the show ends because I missed a couple of <laughs> things because I was trying to research the sh- stuff and I was like, oh, uh, I missed no that. Problem. And, all right. No problem. Um, but yeah, thank. Oh, yeah, Christian. Yes. Before we end, and if and if you were in the pre-show listeners, um, I, I mentioned uh, T9 predictive text. Uh, which Dan and Ro were like, no, like leave that in the past, Christian. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I took the poll to Twitter and I asked, "Do you remember oh, yeah. T nine? And uh, I had three options there. Uh, one was goaded way to text. Uh, the second was I never want to go back, and the third was no. What's that? Google it. Sixty uh, percent of the votes say they never want to go back to T nine. So I guess I'm. <laughs> I truly am the boomer here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank cool. you. Oh yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us both live on YouTube, on Switch, as well as podcast services everywhere, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Stitcher. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for everyone watching. This has been Podcast PXN, and we are out later. We'll be greater. Play Halo. Much love and keep on gaming. I am Dan.